AirMapper provides a means for you to collect location-based Wi-Fi and Bluetooth measurements and create visual heat maps of key performance metrics. Before we begin collecting the measurements, we must first configure AirMapper. Running it the first time, we will see the message, No Floor Plan Selected. Let's look at how we import a floor plan, calibrate it, and begin the data collection process. Before configuring AirMapper, Get a copy of the floor plan in JPEG or PNG format. Depending on the NetAlly tool you're using, you will want to copy the floor plan to a USB memory stick or a micro SD card and connect it to the tool. Next, tap on the settings icon in the upper right corner of the screen. It is a good idea to enter a descriptive name for the survey and a description of the survey. Now let's tap on floor plan. If we've already loaded some floor plans, they would be visible here. To add a new floor plan, I'll tap on the Action button in the lower right corner of the screen. In this case, the contents of the micro SD card are displayed. If the micro SD card is not displayed, tap on the Menu icon in the upper left corner and select SD card or USB drive, whichever device contains the floor plan. Here, I've got a floor plan of a medical office. I'll tap on it to select it. After selecting the floor plan, I need to calibrate it. This will adjust the overall dimensions of the floor plan to the correct size. I'll tap on Dimensions. There are two red dots connected by a line. I'll drag these dots to two locations on the floor plan. It is important that I know the exact distance between these two locations. In this case, the floor plan shows the distance of the outside wall is 60 feet. So I'll drag them to the ends of that wall. I found it very useful to carry a laser measuring tool with me on Wi-Fi surveys. This is an easy way to measure the distance between two walls. Notice the marker distance at the top of the screen is not 60 feet. I'll tap on the marker distance and enter 60 and press OK. Now that I've calibrated the floor plan, I'll tap back. Signal propagation will vary depending on the environment you're surveying. For a space with closed offices or a hotel, you may want to use 10 feet. For an open office space where there are cubicles, 20 feet may be a better choice. In general, the propagation distance will increase as the number of RF obstacles decrease, such as walls. In this case, I'll go with 10 feet. Now that the floor plan has been configured, I'll tap on the back arrow at the bottom of the screen. If you need to delete a floor plan, you can tap on the three dots next to the floor plan name. I'll tap on the back arrow at the bottom of the screen to go back to Air Mapper setting. There are three different survey modes. Let's quickly discuss each of them. Current scan. When using this mode, the tool is always scanning the channels. When you tap on the floor plan, the current readings for each of the channels are saved for that location. This is the fastest way to perform a passive survey. Scan once. This mode will scan through all the channels once you tap the screen at the given location. This mode will provide the most accurate measurement at that location. However, it'll take longer than current scan mode. Connected. The connected mode will connect to a specific wireless network. Each time you take a reading, you will record the metrics for that network at the location you tapped on the floor plan. This will allow you to see which AP you're connected to and where roaming occurs. For this example, I'll select current scan and press OK. Dwell time is the amount of time spent on each channel during the scan. It's important that dwell time be slightly longer than the standard beacon time of 100 milliseconds. This will assist in discovering all the networks on that channel. I'll leave it at 110 milliseconds. You may choose to override any channel and band settings you've configured. In this case, I'll leave it off. Now that configuration's complete, I'll tap the back arrow and begin the survey. I'll pinch and zoom to the location where I'm beginning the survey. Then I'll tap Start to begin. A message box will appear displaying the current configuration. I'll dismiss it. Now I'll tap on the screen at the starting location. As soon as the circle turns green, I can move to the next location. It's best to move to the edge of the circle so you have overlap between measurements. I'll continue taking measurements until I've surveyed the entire space. Once complete, I'll tap Stop at the top of the screen. Then I'll tap the Upload icon 
to upload the survey to Link Live or export it to Survey Pro. Once uploaded to Link Live, I can use my web browser to view, filter, and generate reports. Thank you.